Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are going to kick off data streaming series with PySpark using Kafka. Apache Kafka is a distributed event streaming solution that enables application to efficiently manage billions of events. It is a published subscribe messaging system that accepts data stream from several sources and allows real-time analysis of big data streams. It can quickly scale up with minimal downtime, and we will use Apache Kafka as a source to develop a data streaming application using PySpark. We have covered PySpark basics and developed a batch processing data pipeline in the previous session. The link is in the description below. We can use a log file or distributed engines like Kafka or Kinesis to build a stream processing application using PySpark. However, we want to stream data from a relational database. This is not supported by Spark out of the box. Therefore, we will stream database changes to Kafka. And for this, we will utilize Debezium Postgres connector. We will use Kafka as a source for our data streaming application. Debezium Postgres connector captures row-level database changes and streams them to Kafka via Kafka Connect. This connector works without writing additional code and we can stream database records. How is this actually possible? Starting with Postgres version 10 plus, there's a logical replication stream mode. It is called PG output and it is natively supported by Postgres SQL. Logical replication is a method of replicating database objects and their changes based upon their replication identity, which usually is the primary key. It uses publish subscribe method, commonly known as PubSub, similar to Kafka. PubSub provides a framework for exchanging messages between publishers and subscribers. With this mode, Debezium Postgres connector can subscribe to the logical replication and receive database changes without the need for additional plugins or code. So this simply means that the connector consumes the Postgres replication logs in order to stream the database changes. And all we have to do is deploy it on our Kafka Connect environment and configure the connector. Okay, with this backdrop, let's go over the Docker setup. We will deploy the various components such as Kafka and Debezium as Docker containers. Kafka requires Zookeeper. The Zookeeper is primarily used to track the status of nodes in the Kafka cluster and maintain a list of Kafka topics and messages. So we will build a Zookeeper container as well. In addition, we deploy a schema registry container. Schema registry stores the schema information about the data sent via Kafka messages. The data producers, before sending the data to Kafka, talks to the schema registry first and checks if the schema is available. If it doesn't find the schema, then it registers it and caches it in the schema registry. This protects against the bad data being transmitted from the producer. The Kafka server, also known as Kafka broker, which is in charge of the topic's message storage. A Kafka topic is a collection of messages that belong to a given category. For example, we can stream all the product tables data to a single product topic. Let's start with configuring our environment. First, we'll go over the Postgres setup. We have installed and configured PostgreSQL in this video here. Feel free to pause and install Postgres following the step-by-step -step guide provided in this video. We will use this installation for this series. So let's go ahead and launch PG Admin. This is the GUI database management tool. We will check write ahead log or simply known as wall level. We can check this setting with the following query. So we query the PG setting and check where the name is wall level. This setting is located in the postgresql.config file. We can open this file from our installed directory and search for wall underscore level settings. And make sure this is set to logical. Save the updated file and make sure to restart the Postgres services on the server. Otherwise, this setting will not take effect 
and we won't have enough details to capture the database changes. Wall level determines how much information is written to the wall. The default value is replica, which writes enough data to support wall archiving and replication. Logical adds additional information necessary to support logical decoding. And this stores information on row level changes. Once the service restarts, we can query the PG setting again to make sure the wall level is set to logical. For Debezium connector to work as expected, the user associated with it must run as a user that has the following permissions. So the user must have replication privileges in the database to add the table to a publication. A publication is essentially a group of tables whose data changes are intended to be replicated through the logical replication. The user must have create privileges on the database to add publication. In addition, user must have select privileges to copy the initial table data. By default, the table owners automatically have the select permission on the table. For this demonstration, I have added the ETL user to the Postgres role. But you can define a fine-grained security in your environment. This covers the database setup. Next, we will cover the Debezium connector and Kafka setup. We will set up both of these as Docker containers. Docker Desktop is a prerequisite for this. So make sure to download the Docker Desktop and install it with defaults. It's a straightforward process. Docker containers make this tedious process a breeze. I covered why Docker should be on your list to learn technologies here. Feel free to check it out. This is our Docker Compose file. We need a Zookeeper instance to manage Kafka. Therefore, we spin up a Zookeeper. The Zookeeper runs on port 2181. And in this instance, we are using the Confluent image of Zookeeper. Following this, we set up the Kafka container. This depends on Zookeeper servers. Kafka runs on the port 9092. Kafka advertised listeners configures the broker to listen on this port. So internally within the Docker environment, we will use the port 9092. And from outside the Docker container, we can access Kafka on the port 29092. All clients internal to Docker will use port 9092 to reach Kafka broker. And we expose the port 29092 for external connectivity. We'll see this in action when we create a Python producer and a consumer. Kafka listener security protocol map is set to plain text. Following Kafka, we define Debezium containers detail. This is based on the Debezium image. It needs the Kafka server details. Since this is internal, we provide the Kafka container name and the local port, which is 9092. Debezium needs the message serializer and deserializer, and we provide the Avro converter. Our messages will be serialized by Avro converter. Avro is a data serialization system, and it is quite similar to JSON. Debezium also needs the schema registry details. Schema registry stores and retrieves the Avro schema for our messages and we will define this next. This service also depends on Kafka. Following Debezium, we define our schema registry container. This will be responsible for storing and retrieving the schema of our messages. It keeps track of the schema version as our schema evolves over time, and this service needs the Zookeeper and Kafka server. A last container is optional. This is Kafka Manager, and this provides a GUI interface to manage our Kafka cluster. And this service runs on port 9000, and it depends on Zookeeper and Kafka services, so we will list those as the dependencies. The complete Docker Compose file is available on GitHub. We will go ahead and start all of these containers with docker-compose-up-d command. And if this is the first time you're running this command, then Docker will pull down these images from the Docker Hub. Then it will build and start these images. 
I have most of these images available locally, therefore the installation process will be quick. Once we see all of these containers started, we can bring up Docker Desktop to view the containers. We can ping the various APIs endpoints such as Kafka Manager, Schema Registry, and Kafka Connect to make sure the services are up and running. Let's go ahead and test one of these services. We will launch the Kafka Manager, which runs on port 9000. So we'll say localhost colon 9000, and this is the GUI of Kafka Manager. In the Kafka Manager, we can add our Kafka cluster. So we click on the cluster dropdown and select Add Cluster. We provide a name for this cluster. Make sure to provide a name without spaces or special characters. I'll call this Streaming. This requires the Zookeeper service. So we provide the Zookeeper image name, which is Zookeeper, colon the port, which is 2181. We'll go ahead and check the following checkbox. Enable GMX polling, poll consumer inf information, and enable active offset cache. Make sure you check the latter two only for the small consumers. We will leave the rest of the options default and click save. This will add the cluster. Now we can view the broker information under this cluster. Along with that, we can also list all the available topics. We can create a topic from this UI and let's go ahead and create a topic. Provide a topic name and leave the rest of the options default. We have successfully created a Kafka topic. Now we are going to go ahead and send some messages to this topic and consume these messages. Rather than using the console consumer and producer, we'll use Python to create a producer and a consumer. To code these, we'll use Jupyter Notebook and we will need Kafka Python library installed. We can install it with a pip command, pip install kafka-python. This will go ahead and install the library. In the Jupyter Notebook, we will import Kafka Producer from Kafka. Make sure to match the casing of Kafka Producer. The producer needs the Kafka server, so we will define a local variable and provided the Kafka server and the port, which is 29092. In addition, it needs the topic name. So we will define another variable and provide it the topic name. Let's create an instance of Kafka producer, and this needs the Kafka server detail, and we supply it with our local variable. We save this instance in a local variable. Now we call this instance and access the send function. This takes two arguments, topic name and the message. At the end, we print that the message is sent. That is, if there are no errors. Let's go ahead and execute the cell to send a message to this topic. Okay, the message is sent successfully. So we'll create another notebook or kernel and we define a Kafka consumer here. It will be very similar to the producer. In this instance, we import the Kafka consumer. We define our Kafka server and the topic. We create an instance of the consumer. This needs the topic name and we need to set auto offset reset and we'll set it to earliest. And the Kafka server details. We save this instance in a local variable. We iterate over this variable and print the topic name and the value, which is the message. This prints our topic name and our message. So we have successfully created a producer and a consumer in Python. Now we can go back to the previous kernel and send another message. And if we flip over, the message is received instantly by the consumer. As soon as the messages arrive in this topic, this consumer will read and display them. And if we are to open our Kafka manager, we should see activity on this topic. The offset should be at the last message, and we should see the consumer group IDs 
that are reading from this topic. We can also view the topics and the messages from the command line. We can open the Docker desktop application and click on the Kafka container. And here we can access the terminal. All the Kafka producer and consumer scripts are located in the user bin directory. So we can change directory to this location. We see the Kafka files here. We list the Kafka topics with Kafka topic script. We can start the console producer and consumer from this location here as well using these files. Let's go ahead and print the available topics in this cluster with the following command. Once it execute, it lists all the available topics. This covers the Kafka and the Debezium setup. We will stop here for this session. In the next video, we will set up the database streaming to a Kafka topic. So tune in next time for Kafka database streaming. This is all for now. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.